Good morning. Should King Zedekiah trust in the Egyptians? Our reading is at Jeremiah chapter 37, verses 3 to 10. And Zedekiah the king sent Jehuchal the son of Shelemiah and Zephaniah the son of Maasiah the priest to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Pray now to the Lord our God for us. Now Jeremiah was coming and going among the people, for they had not yet put him in prison. Then Pharaoh's army came up from Egypt, and when the Chaldeans who were besieging Jerusalem heard news of them, they departed from Jerusalem. Then the word of the Lord came to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus you shall say to the king of Judah, who sent you to me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come up to help you, will return to Egypt to their own land. And the Chaldeans shall come back and fight against this city and take it and burn it with fire. Thus says the Lord, Do not deceive yourselves, saying the Chaldeans will surely depart from us, for they will not depart. For though you had defeated the whole army of the Chaldeans who fight against you, and there remained only wounded men among them, they would rise up, every man in his tent, and burn the city with fire. So King Zedekiah has worked out a deal with the Egyptians so that the Egyptian armies come up to Jerusalem and hopefully give him some relief from the Babylonians. And Zedekiah wants Jeremiah to pray for him, pray that the Chaldeans will leave. So yes, God does give a word to his servant Jeremiah. Yes, the uh, Babylonians are going to leave, but they're not going to leave very far. They're just going to depart of short ways and soon return. And when the Babylonians return, they're going to burn Jerusalem with fire. So the warning here is against self-deception. And there's some pretty interesting imagery going on here. If all the Chaldeans were defeated and all that were left were a few wounded people from the Chaldean army, God tells Jeremiah to show this picture, to tell this picture of them rising up, these wounded Chaldeans rising up and still coming in and burning Jerusalem with fire. So God has a definite purpose. He's not going to be delayed, side sidetracked. He's not going to be having it go a different way. It's going to be God's way. God is chastening his people. He loves them. And so he will not be deterred. He is very definite on this. Yes, Zedekiah says, Jeremiah, please pray for us. Jeremiah has been praying for them. That is why God is working to recover this country from its crazy leaders. So here's the picture. And it is to come back to Zedekiah with quite a firm, a firm reaction at verse 10. God loves her. God's not going to be deterred. Uh, renting the Egyptians isn't going to help. And so God is still working for his people. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, why do we choose to trust in the flesh? It's just a self-deception. And now through Jeremiah, your warning, King Zedekiah, don't trust in the flesh. Don't trust in your schemes. Don't plan that the Egyptians are going to save you. The world never saves us. Egyptian Egypt in the Bible we know is a symbol of the world as well as a literal place. So trusting in the Egyptians is disastrous. Lord, help us not to trust in any salvation we might think we're getting from the world. We know we're not getting any. Our salvation is from you. Be our guide, be our helper. And if you chasten us, then do it completely and meet your purposes there. Help us, Lord, just as you're helping Judah. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well, the answer is pretty plain, isn't it? No, Zedekiah should not trust in the Egyptians. Instead, he should trust in the Lord his God. And so should you and I trust in the Lord our God. God be with you this day.